I need to find something good. That's all. Um, let's see. Uh, starting out on the banner, we have Beatrix's OSB. Um, multiplier increases the number of knight abilities used. It's okay. Um, it really, it's just an OSB with a holy sword. It's actual full holy sword and not uh, the half-assed one that Celis gets on the current Final Fantasy VI banner. <laughs> Thanks for the follow, Hot Drop. Um, so... Beatrix is a good character. She's basically Agrius, except she gets uh, White Magic 5 instead of Spellblade 4. Um, and her BSB is probably is like 95% of what Agrius is, is. I think it's very very useful for Agrius' second co command on her Burst Soul Break to be uh, Holy Damage, while Beatrix is, isn't. Um, so I'm a, I'm a fan of this OSB. If you like Beatrix and you have a developed Beatrix, um, this is a this is a win on the banner for you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, next up, we have uh, the Ramu staff for Garnet. This is her second burst soul break, and it's a really fun one. Party attack magic thirty percent, so she works well on a hybrid team. And you'll see. <laughs> Thank you for the follow, Drago Slime. Um, and you'll see from her burst commands that it's actually useful on just about any team. Um, AoE Imperil Lightning, which is, uh, really cool. The, the current, like, useful Imperil Lightning we have is, uh, a physical one that, uh, Lightning has it for BSB too. And now Garnet gets the magical version. Uh, the burst commands are, it's a summoning burst, like Golbez's, like Hope's, um, so the first time you use the first command, the attack command, it gives you the summoning status. And that turns the two commands into something else. If you don't use the summoning command, the second command starts out as four times single target, lightning, non-elemental. That's already not so bad against an imperil, imperil lightning to target. But if we do give yourself the summoning status, the summoning status command itself is a single target 40% of match HP, HP heal. This is exactly like Ryzen's command, which already is really cool. Um, but the reason why Ryzen's is good is because it enables uh, something else to happen. And uh, the same thing happens here with Garnet's. She enters summoning mode. If you recast the first command after entering summoning mode, you lose summoning mode. And she does two times AoE lightning, summon magic, and a party 25% max HP heal. That's really cool. So if you're ever in an AoE situation, just using the first command is a really cool thing to have in your party. That's uh, healing the lowest person in your party and then doing an AoE command and alternating that. It's really, really interesting. But if you don't want, or you're facing a, a single target boss, then in summoning mode, you gain an extra attack at no cost to your multiplier. So it's an increase of damage and an increase of your uh, capped damage. So you can do up to 50,000 damage. And you don't lose summoning mode. So you use the first command for the uh, single target heal, and then you just hammer away at the boss for five hits each. This is a really, really cool burst. And one of the the perks about it is the, the staff itself is 20% lightning damage up. And I believe that it is the best staff in the game for this currently. Um, we'll go take a look at the relics. Desh has Imperil Lightning, but that's on a Super Soul Break, not a Burst. I was talking about Bursts only. So this is the staff. It's a 132 base magic and increase lightning damage. This is current, this, by uh, at event launch, this will be the best in the game, um, as far as mages are concerned. So this is a really nice thing. Uh, so right, uh, already we have two hits. So I'm thinking if I like uh, Final Fantasy IX, or I need Final Fantasy IX things, we're on, uh, we're on the right path to a decent banner. 
Next up, we have a support burst from Queena. Uh, a lot of people don't like Queena. I thought he was uh, apt comic relief in Final Fantasy IX, and I loved the character personally. So let's uh, let's take a look at him further. He has five single target random uh, physical damage and full breakdown. That's what the random is for. So it does single target damage, but if it's a multi-target fight, then this allows you to apply the full breakdown to everybody. You, you want single target random on a uh, soul break like this. So let's take it the or take a look at the commands. We have stacking commands. So this is pretty cool. Um, it's essentially Ferris's burst soul break, but instead of being pure single target, you get the random and the full breakdown. And then moving on, we see better commands than Ferris gets. Ferris's commands are good because, you know, okay, Ferris's burst is suited for her because her ability slots are high value because Ferris has an amazing uh, ability coverage. You can put so many things in her ability slots and they'll always be awesome. Queen is different. Uh, Queen does not get those things. So what you want to have on Queen is exactly this, stacking breaks. So you can use her, com or <laughs> his or her commands and, uh, and then put support things in the other two slots. So what you would do with Queen's Burst is use the commands, use the full breakdown, which does not stack with full break, and that allows you to put two breakdowns in uh, Queen's other two slots. So this is a good support burst. Solid, it's not spectacular like a lot of the ones that have been coming out, or not a lot, but a few of the ones that have come out recently in Setzers and Brands, but it's still highly competent and uh, it's not something you shy away from. And as uh, Mexter has mentioned, the Q Garb is the second occurrence of a plus water damage armor. Um, this becomes a little more common as we go on, but it still stays fairly rare. Uh, the other one plus water damage um, armor actually exists on this banner, so you're almost uh, you're in a pretty good position to get it. Uh, Queen is golden hairpin. I have. Uh, a eight-star version of this because I pulled the on the banner that it first came out on. I can't pull on this banner because I pulled so heavily on Final Fantasy IX at that point, and I'm pretty strong here. And but if I was looking for Final Fantasy IX, uh, I'm liking this banner so far. We have a solid support and two really good uh, top end. And uh, for the last BSB on the banner, we have Kuja's, which uh, in my opinion is the best in Peril Dark uh, Burstal Break in the game so far. So already. Top four are uh, desirable things in my eyes. Terra Legacy, the rod itself, is plus 20% dark damage up. Another reason to like it. But let's take a look at its burst, uh, burst commands. We have a single target command and we have an AoE command. Dark non-elemental, and they do higher damage if the user is doomed. Normally, hitting conditions can be tough. Uh, like, if the burst doesn't inflict in peril, but requires you to hit in peril to get the increased uh, damage, like say Bosch's or Sid, right, or Sid from Final Fantasy VII. But this condition is actually extremely easy to hit. Uh, Kuja, all he needs to do is cast Memento Mori, which you probably would have been doing anyway because that's a really good magic buff. Um, and then you're using, you're doing the increased multiplier. So that's why I like this burst so much because it it fulfills all of its conditions to hit its higher damage potential uh, rather easily, and the animation is awesome. And the the relic itself is a really uh, interesting icon. Um, so top four on the banner already are things I like, and not only are they things that I like, but I like them out of a uh, Sid mission um, constraint. Uh, Queen is, is pretty much going to be limited to Sid mission if I if I were to pull it because I think there there's a a fair amount of good support bursts that you could do better with and Queen is uh, equipment potential or equipment selection isn't good but it's still uh, incredible in a Sid mission scenario but the other three are all things that you could ve very viably use outside of a Sid mission in your A team uh, this this is rare for a banner for the top four to to have a, a strength like this. So, uh, moving on, we have 
the start of the Super Soul Breaks with Beatrix's Force Shield. Uh, Super Soul Break, Unwavering Blade, AoE. So this is um, exactly like Agrius's shield. You know, more Agrius comparisons, except Agrius is single target instead of AoE. Um, we prefer the single target, but there is one thing about the Super Soul Break that pushes it uh, above Agrius's shield. And I think that's the more important one. You can suffer with the AoE and the Unholy because you have a, it's a plus 20% to holy damage up. And um, holy damage armor is really, really nice considering the, the prevalence of uh, holy damage that we can do with all the knights in all of our realms. It's really, really a great thing to have. So this uh, is generally, in my eyes, a more desirable thing than Agrius' version of this. Uh, Queen of can, uh, can equip spears. <laughs> and yeah, I could put the, my, my three Gilgamesh OSBs on that I'm going to be pulling from Banner 3. Um, but still, I don't consider using being able to use spears and daggers a, a very good equipment pool. Uh, we have the Kuja model, or whatever they intend on calling it in, uh, in global. It won't be this. They have never used this, uh, this terminology. We have, um, looks like, magical light armor. Uh, AoE and is basically the exact same thing, except for me, or as uh, Beatrix is, but it's armor instead. Not armor, uh, mage oriented instead. And wow, okay, we have even more elemental. It's a plus 20% dark damage up armor. Um, so this has value as a relic. Uh, okay, we're, we're going places with this banner. Oh, is this his, uh, his thong armor? I, I mean, can you obviously want it just for that, right? Uh, so next we have Princess Dress. This debuted on the last Final Fantasy IX event on the second banner and is one of the more interesting uh, pseudo medicas in the game. Uh, HP stock is basically a medica but better since even overheal is still valuable. Uh, but usually HP stock comes in the 2000 variety which obviously is not anywhere near as strong as, uh, as most uh, Cura and Curaga medicas. But this one's HP stock 3000, which is uh, about the level of the Cura Medica and gives magic and defense plus 30%. This is a rare status, rare-ish status. Um, it only occurs on one thing that I know of, possibly one other, but uh, it occurs on something people use a lot. Uh, the Sid Rain's Burst gives the magic and defense plus 30% status. So this would not be a Super Soul Break you'd want to combine with that, but I think at this point this uh, item is probably limited to Sid Mission, um, so you're not going to be worrying about that. This is an excellent thing to have in your Sid Mission party in Final Fantasy IX. Um, this is a really, really nice Super Soul Break. So all, already looking at just Super Soul Breaks, we have three great consolation prizes to go along with the, top, the great top end. Um, there are very few true misses on this banner so far, and we really like that. Golden Hairpin, I already went into its uh, water trait, um, so it's a hat instead of uh, the Q-Garb uh, light armor. I do prefer the hat because of uh, the high stat coverage. Not only does it have um, the attack from the light armor, but it also has magic in mind, so you can, you can throw this around on anybody. Um, this is a really good piece of armor. And then we have an, a really good... Uh, uh, we have a few of these, so people have experienced them in the past, but getting plus 50% attack um, really opens up your options for Sid Mission RWs. And if you're able to combine this with uh, Garnet's Divine Guardian, which I did, and that's an another reason I pulled on the banner I did, uh, because Golden Hairpin and Divine Guardian were on it. Uh, Divine Guardian provides a haste and a lot of defenses and heavy regen and plus 50% resistance. If you're able to combine these two things, it makes you uh, extremely powerful in Final Fantasy IX uh, for Sid missions. Because uh, generally, having a boost and having a haste allows, enables you to uh, RW in wall or a strong, a really strong burst that breaks the fight and not have to sacrifice uh, the utility for it. So, um, 
This is probably the worst soul break that we've experienced so far in the banner, but it's still an okay one for Sid missions. Uh, and last on the banner, now we have the worst. Um, Freya is a maligned character. Um, she's basically Kamari. Uh, low chance of blind on hit. We don't really care about that on the weapon. Um, this, the soul break itself is fine and it'll give you a strong damage dealer for uh, Final Fantasy IX, but there's just uh, a, there's a lot of good characters in Final Fantasy IX, uh, and it's hard to fit her into a party. However, uh, she does, just like Kamari, have support for access, but she has it native. I believe you have to die for it on Kamari. Um, so adding Freya on top of your Queena into your submission party is uh, really effective because it gives you a lot of breakdown coverage. Uh, for high support. So a strong physical team would probably be like Zidane, Beatrix, Freya, and Queena uh, along with uh, your healer. So this is pretty good. Just um, it it speaks to the strength of the banner when this is your worst, worst relic on it. True. Kamari can life siphon. Uh, that's that's a that's a really important observation, um, because this is a high damage burst. Uh, you've, we've seen them in the past. I just talked about it on the first uh, anniversary banner. Single target damage, with an element of the damage that it does. So subsequent casts are very very strong. Um, Freya has a hard time dealing wind damage, so she can't take advantage of this. I believe the only ways that can, she can do it is the. 3 star Dragoon ability and the 6 star, uh, which 3 star is limited to 1 hit so you don't really care about it, and the 6 star is obviously something you're not going to be able to hone much. So you would love to be able to life siphon this out. Unfortunately you can. Um, she is there to put breakdowns on the enemy, and uh, that is it. So that reduces the effectiveness of the soul break because you're not even going to be using that much two at max in uh, in a normal fight <laughs> wind slash <laughs> thank you i think we wind slash i have fond memories of wind slash but um it's a uh, it's heyday is in the past she can use wrath but Wrath is... Wrath overwrites your attack buff. Right, as Urura said. So, that's not exactly the the nicest thing in the world to have on... on Freya. Uh, Alright, so, Banner 1, if uh, people need Final Fantasy IX things, like if they're weak in Final Fantasy IX, or they like Final Fantasy IX, this is the banner. Um... Or maybe it isn't. Maybe Banner 2 is better. Let's go take a look at it. Um, right away, we have Vivi's OSB. Uh, basic OSB. It's going to do, do uh, a 40 times multiplier. Uh, it has a high magic, of course, and it's a staff. And uh, here's the key. And here's one of, why this is probably one of the best relics in the game. Um, it's a mage weapon that has a natural fire damage up that's an OSB. Uh, this is not gated by realm synergy. Uh, this is an incredible relic. It's just awesome. Uh, it doesn't override anything that boosts attack. It overrides anything that boosts just attack. So um, Wrath, the 3% attack on Wrath would actually sta stack with something like uh, like Queen's Burst, for instance, or Onion Knight Burst. Uh, let's see. Uh, so already we have an insane win here. Uh, whether Life Siphon or... Whether Life Siphon or, or Wrath are better is highly dependent on the character using them, uh, the situation. They're both very good, and they're both very useful. Um, 
this is a very, very, very nice stat stick, and I, I want it personally. Um, but, eh. I, I don't, I can't pull on Final Fantasy IX anymore. I just have, I'm way too good here. And this would have to be an overwhelmingly good banner for me to go for it. So let's check out and see if it is. It, yeah, it does not overwrite Vessel of Fate. It, it works exactly like any other uh, attack buff. It's a single attack buff, which means it will stack with anything that doesn't buff just attack. So it won't stack with Shout, it won't stack with uh, Frog Drop, it won't stack with, uh, you know, Minfilia's uh, Last Stand thing, but it will stack with Queen's attack buff here, it will stack with Vessel of Fate, and uh, stuff like that. Alright, next we have Amarant, who is a, an unfortunate soul, but DNA has a good tendency to give uh, high damage things to unfortunate characters. The ones that don't receive a whole lot of love, but can sometimes receive a whole lot at once. So let's see if this is uh, Avenger. I'm not sure if that's a fist or a thrower. I know he... I think it's a fist weapon. Yeah, it is. Um... Because he had a thrower for his super soul break. So we have AoE and uh, end fire. See if the commands are any good. Uh, RS small damage fire up. That's uh, that's unfortunate because uh, we could really use some some fire damage fists. There's only two decent ones in the game right now, and um, the next occurrence of one is in like four months on the Final Fantasy 14 banner for uh, Eda's burst. So uh, attack we have four times single target fire. And for defense, we have four, two times AoE. This is exactly like uh, Kusha's burst, that it does the four times single target, two times AoE, and then it has a conditional to increase the damage. However, high critical is not uh, a desirable conditional. Um, what high critical 200% 200, 200 here means is that it does twice as much damage, twice as much additional damage for a critical as it would otherwise. So if you're doing 2,000 damage, but you were doing 2,000 damage normally with a, a strike, but you crit, a crit would do 3,000 instead, so it does 150% damage. A high critical would mean it would do 200% damage, so the crit would do 4,000 instead. This is meant to combo with Echo's Hamlin, uh, the in-realm 50% uh, uh, increased crit rate. If you do not have the increased crit rate, this is a really difficult sell. It's hard to hit this. While Kuja, as long as you use Memento Mori at the start of the fight, you're going to be hitting your condition every single attack you make. Uh, this high critical, even if you have the plus, per, uh, the crit plus with uh, Echo's Hamlin, her BSB, it's you're still not going to be hitting this all the all the much. It is a quite a bit of damage boost, but um, it's still something we don't like to see in a game like this. You don't like to see things that are just bottom of the barrel if they're not combo with something else. So uh, I don't like this burst at all. Uh, next we have Vivi's Flame Staff. This is a uh, recurrence from the last Final Fantasy IX event. Um, AoE and fire burst mode. The advantage of this staff is that it is plus fire damage in all realms. Um, which is nice. It's actually really nice. Um, it just happens to be on a banner with a, one that does the same thing but much better. So if you get it, you should be happy. But you probably won't be because it could have been something better. Uh, not bottom of the barrel. Go look back to my assessment of the, found f the the fifth banner of the second anniversary festival, uh, where you have jets uh, and dark burst. Um, it, it is basically that. You have your four single target command, and you have your two AOE command, and that's it. It's a plain Jane burst. Um, this is not good enough anymore. I guess it's 
fine in a submission scenario, but I guess what I'm the point I'm trying to make is this has nothing on this. It uh this is old old hat. It's um it's dated already. Dated at you know DOA. Uh second on the list, VV. I already talked about how it's a good flame staff, so let's um Take a look at its commands. Uh, these, wow, uh, that's pretty basic. So I mean, you're looking at this and you're saying that that's exactly what this is. So it's not that great. Um, probably has more value as a mage burst because mages benefit from their bursts more. Um, but really, it's the the value of it is the stat stick. Um, okay, so moving on. So, I mean, we have two basic bursts. They're they're functional, but not really uh, not really exceptional things. Uh, next, we have uh, the recurrence of Beatrix's uh, Night Protector. This is it's weird that this is on the second banner, sort of. I guess this is a, just a all out Beatrix event because uh, the first banner is dedicated to her, and the second banner is dedicated to her. Um, your clearance items. The, this is the Beatrix Thrift Store. Um, it's a plus holy sword. Uh, I mean, there are so many of these at this point that it's not that exciting if it's not an OSB. But um, it's the four times AOE Imperil Holy. Uh, it does higher damage of all party members alive. You're usually going to be hitting that condition. So it does a fair amount of damage on its uh, entry. But it's not that much of an increase in multiplier, so it's not something you can really factor into its value. Um, and the commands are, as I talked about on the first banner, uh, it has two single target self sentinel, holy damage, and the second command, which e uh, Agrius has above her, is identical. These commands are identical to Agrius's, uh, except that Agrius has two times holy physical instead of uh, just plain non-elemental. Um, and we like that more, usually because you're inflicting the imperil on the boss and you want to use elemental commands to take advantage of that. Um, so you can use it, the burst more often. But it's this is still definitely, what in my eyes, the best burst on the banner. This has a lot of use uh, at, for an A-team because of the imperil holy. Um, Beatrix her, uh, herself as a character is really awesome. Um, this is the best burst on the banner. These are playing Jane. This is an awesome, awesome, probably the best mage uh, over, over strike in the game at this point uh, because of its uh, ability or <coughs> status as a stat stick relic. Uh, moving on, we have uh, Rising Sun. This is Armorant's thrower. Uh, a single target damage, high critical. Again, it's great if you can combo it with something, but view this in a better light if you commonly have this status. Um, I, I can't individually evaluate relics as being good because of this, because it's something that requires you to have something else for it to be any worth anything. It's, it's the OSB problem uh, that I had with uh, physical characters. Um, Self-attack defense 30%, this is okay. Uh, but look at another monk that has a similar super soul break than this that is much better. Uh, currently on the second anniversary festival banner, we have Zell's super soul break, his uh, crystal fist, or crystal glove. Um, it does single target damage at zero cast time and gives self defense attack and resistance 30%. So you get a better buff and you trade high critical 200% for a zero cast time. I take that any day of the week. Zell Zell shows the power of what a good super soul break should be on a physical character, uh, a physical monk. Um, this one is not one of them. Uh, Steiner. Uh, tin armor. We uh, a lot of people may have this because uh, it occurred on a really good banner uh, in the last festival. Um, but it's just four times AOE and pearl fire. This is okay. Um, 
being a super soul break means that see Steiner is a knight spellblade he has five in each so his primary uh, ability usage is to use Gaia Cross Saint Cross and the three um, and uh, eventually four five star spell blades and the six star spell blade only one ability out of all of this can hit that and that's the uh, the five star fire spell blade so I suppose this could be a great addition to a fire team um, because Steiner could potentially use you know Gaia cross or Saint cross coupled with the the, the five star fire spell blade um, so this is one of the better Imperial Fires because it, it's on a character that can t can make direct usage of it. Um, but it's a it's a middle of the pack co consolation prize, better than Amaranth's, but um, but not as good as some of the stuff that occurred on the first banner. Uh, next we have Ragnarok for Beatrix, which is. Uh, like the model of what you want to see on a on a super soul break um this is great and it still has a lot of usage even today uh knights don't need specifically need bursts because they have great ability pools so what you're able to do here with beatrix is use knight abilities or life siphon and just use this when you need it uh being able to do these high uh, single target physical damage and add magic blink to the party. It's just a great thing to have Like sometimes you may even want this in an A team just because you know This is my magic blink and uh, I've got to find a way to fit it in and I can't do it on my healer and So you want it on a physical and this is a, a great place to have it Of course, it's no Furion's first soul break that instant insta cast magic blink is just disgusting But this is uh this is a great super soul break and uh, last on the banner, we still have uh, Lowly Soul Breaks taking up uh, the last slot. We have uh, one, one of the better old Soul Breaks in uh, the Thunder Gloves, which is yeah, minor resistance to lightning. Not that great since uh, elemental resistance doesn't stack, but the Soul Break itself is really good. Uh, single target damage, so it's doing about 5.1 multiplier. This is this is okay. I mean, it's a it's just a soul break, so what, what can you expect? But uh, the party defense plus fifty percent is uh, a really good status. Um, yeah, it's really dated, and I, it feels like I'm talking this up, and I'm probably am. Uh, you're gonna see rare usage of something like this these days. I'm more just hearkening back to the old days when the plus uh, defense plus fifty percent and the plus uh, fifty percent res resistance buffs were really really strong additions to parties. Um, you, I was talking not too long ago about Bart's Excalibur and uh, the True Blade of Victory, uh, and how we, I loved that Super Soul Break. Um, but I, you know, if you're gonna have a Soul Break on a banner, this is actually one that's that has use. Uh, so evaluating the banners, obviously, I from. It's easy to tell. I didn't like the second banner as much as the first. The second is a chase for relics. Um, VV's staff is awesome. Uh, not really looking for these kind of bursts anymore. This is a good burst. Um, oh, I completely skipped over Zidane's vest. I don't know if anyone mentioned that, but... <laughs> Aurora did. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Zidane's vest is actually a good super soul break. Um... Here we have the exact same, not the exact same, because we have non-elemental two, the exact same plus non-elemental damage Super Soul Break as Freya had on the first banner, um, except Zidane has much better targets for hitting wind damage, and the relic itself is plus wind damage armor. This is a very good Super Soul Break. Um, and it gives him the M win status, which people like to uh, combo with uh, OSBs, and Zidane has a uh, wind damage OSB, but by itself, this is still a good super soul break. This is uh, this is essentially a clone of Sephiroth's. Um, single target elemental damage gives that element and is a plus of that element piece of armor. Uh, it's just light armor instead of a bracer, so I like it um, as a super soul break. Unfortunately, the top end of the banner doesn't live up to um, the fairly decent. 
consolation prizes. So, chase, if you will, for the VB staff, but uh, I wouldn't suggest a poll otherwise. If you're looking for Final Fantasy IX things, I, I'm actually in love with this first banner. Yeah, that's true, Aurora. And with the M1 status, you do have a high, uh, high probability of, uh, ex well, not high, but a good probability of exceeding the 60,000 damage cap that Freya can do with hers. So, I mean, that is a benefit. Um, so that's, uh, that's the evaluation for the banners. Uh, now we'll move on to the Sid mission. I like, I'm going to be using uh, Zarai's uh, Japanese guides from now on because I feel like they're the most detailed that we have uh, prior to event, event launch. Uh, after event launch, I suggest looking at uh, the TF, uh, TF Murphy's Enemy AI. They're my favorite guides um, because they allow you to uh, adapt your team. They, they show you the path and then you plug your team into it. Uh, that's why I, I really love TF Murphy's AI posts. But uh, for right now, what we have is the Rosa May uh, Boss Guide Vizarai. And we're going to look down at the Sid mission, which is Mystodons. Looks like we have a lot of AI going on there. Uh, there are four waves totaling six Mystodons. They come in a 1-2-1-2 one, two, one, two pattern. Each Mystodon uses Headbutt in its first turn after spawning and after being reduced to 50% or lower HP, and always follows AoE attacks with Headbutt. Um, that's a lot of AI, and I'm not really going to get into it. We'll just break down the, the damage types. We have Nat, uh, Magical Dark Damage to all targets, but we have Black, Physical, Black, Physical, and all targets, one target. Do they have... They do have AoE Physical too. So, it seems like this isn't a, like a super strong fight for making use of your two knights, uh, Steiner and Beatrix, with, uh, you know, Guy Across or uh, Magicler, but I can see it still being good because it makes it so... Say you put Magicler on uh, Steiner. Steiner is a really interesting knight because he can Magicler and use uh, Drain Strike. So you can actually reflect Steiner and all of these single target attacks. Uh, unfortunately, there's not many of them, but you know, this this is an option where you can reflect Steiner and uh, just have him Drain Strike to heal himself. And you'll, uh, you'll be doing damage to the boss. Also consider their Fire Weak. So I don't know, that's something neat. I might do it anyway, just because I talked it up. Uh, I don't think it's probably not ideal because of the the array of percentages we're looking at here. It's not like this is going to be a common attack, but I might do it anyway just to show that it's a it's a possibility. Um, so it looks like we're looking at fire damage and physical damage. Oh, we got bio and dark too, but that still is a lot of fire damage, so fire resist may be a, a strong option here. Um, you have, was that was four waves of enemies, and they're fire weak. So what do, we, what do we do? What do we bring for this party? They absorb dark, so we're going to stay away from using the dark zone, of course. Um, uh, yeah, I used uh, Reflect, Stein Reflect Steiner on the, the Black Waltz Ultimate Sid mission. That was fun. I want to do it again. Um, they're vulnerable to slow, but their low health pools makes me wonder if that's really that useful. Uh, because slow is something that gains um, value the longer the battle goes on. So when you're facing four waves of enemies, that's a lot of slowing that you need to do in order for it to, you know, be as, fa as effective as it, as it can. Stun may be more of what you're looking for, um, because that's something that, that has its full effect uh, proc immediately. Uh, who can do that? Can Amarant Celerity 4? If Amarant can Celerity 4, then he's available to do that. But uh, Zidane would probably be a better choice. Unfortunately, Zidane has no way of doing fire damage, as far as I know. Um, I think what I'm looking for in this fight is I'm going to completely ignore the status vulnerabilities um, and exploit fire weakness instead. So I like uh, Steiner in this fight. Uh, either for the Drain Strike strat or the uh, his ability to be a Spellblade, or I like Vivi 
because you know natural fire mage they're obviously trying to get you to pull on banner too because you want super fire mage to deal with this uh, sit mission uh, so vv steiner uh, Beatrix is probably going to be the lineup that I bring. So we'll take advantage of the fire and just burn through all the all four waves. Zidane can. What's uh, what's his fire ability? Uh... Yeah, it probably does many stuff. Oh, oh, you meant, uh, stun. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, Zidane can obviously use, uh, he's a quick little guy, so he can use Celerity 4 and Dismissal. Ah, uh, right. Papalimo. I was trying to think of another Mage Fire Burst that would be better, and Papalimo's is clearly, clearly better. Oh yeah, it looks like Hot Drop's got it, got it all settled. Um, now we'll take a look at the uh, the Ultimate Plus Plus. We have Ice Week, Tiamat. Uh, Three hundred ninety-one thousand health pool, reduces magic, reduces attack, reduces defense. So all we need to use is full break here, and everyone should be using that anyway. Status vulnerability stun. Well, this is rare. Uh, a single target boss is vulnerable to stun, so maybe uh, it might be worth using uh, Zidane here. Oh, that's a good point, Raccoon. I uh, completely forgot about uh, Krill's AoE slow, but consider that since you're going to be doing AoE fire damage, you're probably going to be burning through these bosses uh, or the Mystodons really quickly. So, again, like I brought up, slow probably isn't that useful. I'd rather the added damage from uh, Papalimo than, uh, than the chance to proc slow. Um, physical, not physical, uh, black magic, single target, physical all targets. Okay, so we're on to something here. I see one spell in the first phase that does single target damage. This is good. What we can do, because of our awesome, uh, oh wait a second, this isn't, there's no Sid mission for this. Anyway, you could just bring a knight and throw major fire resist on them, and magic lure. But that may be, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> we, ha we have something that foils the plan. Um, we have not uh, all damage, uh, wind magical. Physical all targets. So reduce magic by 40%, reduce attack by 40%. Um, hmm. This is a, a difficult thing to deal with if it hits the right people. Um, maybe you could potentially carry either Faith or Boost uh, or Memento Mori or something that allows you to uh, single target off these statuses off you because uh, these statuses do not stack with their buff counterpart. So by using um, faith on a target that's been had this status put on them, it completely removes the 40% and gives you 20% um, over that instead. Um, and it works the other way, and that's a, that's a problem you may want to consider for when you're planning the fight. If you're using shout or another single target attack buff, these will not apply, or these, this will cancel it out. It'll take away your 50% and give you minus 40% instead. So it, it works both ways, and that's why I was thinking of uh, using single target abilities to get rid of them. Uh, flame jets, fire all targets, fire one target Faraga. Physical all targets, piercing range physical fire all targets. Um, I don't believe 280% is that damaging, so I don't think it's a requirement that we, uh, we layer physical debuffs on the boss yet, but that may change. Um, 
chance to silence. So we're definitely going to want fi silence resist on casters. Though that's 10% and only in the last phase, so maybe not. I mean, you could... I, I wouldn't be a, opposed to running the risk of uh, him not being able to... And it's only 24% too. So I'd probably just say forget the silence resist. Oh wait, god, that happens on every every, every phase. I, I apologize. That does happen every phase, and it's a higher chance. So... Yeah, silence resist. Um, and just more damage. More 280% piercing. This means it uh, disobeys uh, the defense statistic. And that's 40%. That's, uh, that's pretty damn high. He will spam that. So um, you will not want to skimp on your power breakdown in this fight. You will want at least full break and power breakdown, and more if you can get it. Uh, Tiamat can use any of, atta if, of its attacks on turn one. Tiamat uses flame jets on its first turn, at least five turn, at least every five turns thereafter, in weak phase on, and on its first turn, and at least every three turns thereafter. In weak phase, uh, Tiamat follows. Any of its AoE, AoE attacks always follows any of its AoE attacks with Silence Fall. Absolutely imp imperative that we use Silence Resist here. And um, it's scary to use mages because you will need Silence Resist on all of them. If you don't have Silence Resist on all of them, then, uh, then prepare for an RNG fest. You could lure the Silence Claw. That's a, that's a good call. I thought it would be Nat, but it's not. It's a it's a physical attack, so you could guy across or um, draw fire this off or sentinel, what, whatever. So all this considered, we're basically looking at damage, uh, the ability to get rid of silence, uh, piercing physical, so remember that, and uh, weak to ice. How would I make a team for this? I think this will be my first uh, prime time usage of uh, a Dia BSB. And then I'll create a support group for her with a, a knight to lure the physical attacks. And we're about to put on my last slot. So we got a healer, a support, a knight, a Dia, and. I don't know. Could be anybody. Maybe someone, just a, a strong mage to RW in a strong uh, BSB, like um, Adia. Somebody who can faith. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Yeah, good call, Manista. Because Zidia is going to be your primary source of damage. You don't really care about the magic, uh, the the physical debuff, or Zidia would be mine. But if you have like a counterpart in physical, so you're supporting that person. So if you have a physical version of that person, then you want to have uh, a boost that you can get rid of this debuff with instead. But if you're uh, have a magic like I do, my ice mage is Zidia. Uh, then I I want someone that can fade. Or Adia, who is, because she's a darkness mage, can memento mori it off herself. So. Um. Multiplayer is a mess because you're not building a team for yourself. Um, if you ever want to get uh, multiplayer advice, uh, I will do always do the apocalypse an event on the night that the the event starts so just please come and and watch us trial and error to uh the best possible combination with that all right 